subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, so today is going to wrap up our unit on vectors and we're gonna be talking about projections. So we talked about this very briefly in our last lesson uh, within the context of finding a dot product. And we said that to find a dot product, you needed to multiply the magnitude of one vector by the sort of shadow of the second vector on the first. So that shadow it actually has a name, okay? And it's called a projection. So look at this diagram right here. It shows two vectors, V1 and V2, and the projection of V1 onto V2 is this vector right here in pink. And uh, the projection's used in lots of different applications, particularly if you're trying to find the work done um, uh, on an object. Uh, it's, it's something you, you work with a lot in physics. Um, so let's get into how you would actually find this projection vector and, uh, and look at a couple of different um, applications of it. So we have a nice little formula here uh, to find the projection. Now this looks like kind of a mess, but um, if you wanna find the projection of U onto V, you're going to find the dot product of U and V first, divide it by the magnitude of vector V, the one you're projecting onto, and then uh, uh, squared, and then multiply it by the uh, vector v, the one that you're projecting onto. So in other words, like let's say uh, here is vector v. Okay, so here's vector v, here's vector u. If I wanna project u onto v, the vector that I'm actually trying to find, let me just do this in a different color here, is this vector right here. Okay, where this line right here, this segment is perpendicular uh, to vector v. So if this top one is vector u and the bottom one's vector v, this red one is the projection of u onto v. And so it is a vector. You'll use this formula to figure out what that vector is. Um, as you compute this, you'll notice like a dot product is a scalar, <clears throat> magnitude is a scalar. So when you calculate everything in here inside the parentheses, this is just gonna end up being like a single number. This is not a vector. You will, you'll get a single number, you'll get a scalar here, and then you'll multiply that scalar by vector v. So basically you're gonna take vector v multiply it by the appropriate scale factor, which you get from here, to sort of either shrink it down or make it bigger, and, uh, and you'll get your projection vector. Now, if I wanted to project V onto U rather than U onto V, I'd be talking about this, this one right here, okay, this vector. And notice this projection is actually bigger. This would be if I project, well, I guess it wouldn't be that far. Let's, let's try to see exactly where it would be. Uh, let's, there we go. So here's the right angle. Um, let me redraw that vector. It's not quite that far out. But it can, it is possible for the projection to be longer than the vector that you're projecting onto. Uh, so this blue one here is the projection of V onto U, and this red one is the projection on, of U onto V. So you'll notice that they are different, okay? It's very important to uh, be clear about what is projecting onto what. Um, otherwise, you might get the wrong answer here. You might plug in the wrong, uh, the wrong stuff here. Oh, there we go. Let's get rid of all this. Uh, so, you know, if I was projecting V onto U, uh, you, would, you would swap out these Vs for Us. You basically swap the, uh, the vectors that you're plugging in here. So let's, let's, let's work through an example here. We've got two vectors. 7, 1, and, and uh, 1, 2. So just to give you a little bit of a picture of what's happening here, we've got 7, 1, so I'm just gonna like, it's just gonna be a rough sketch. There's 7, 1 would be like somewhere here. And so 7, 1, which is this U vector, looks something like this. 
okay? And then one comma two, this vector, be, let's see here, one comma two, would look something like this, okay? So now if I wanna project, the easier one to show here is V onto U. Let me, let me label these and I'm gonna zoom in here. Just to allow you to see this a little easier. I was gonna let me, it's getting cut off here. I wonder if I can uh, make this work. All right, well, I might be out of luck. Can't scroll over enough. Nope, I just can't, can't quite fit it in there. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move this sketch over temporarily so that you can actually see it. Uh, sorry, just bear with me here. select everything. There we go. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now I've forgotten which one's which. So the red one's V. So here's V and U is the blue one. Okay. So if I want to project V onto U, I'm gonna get a vector that's running along U. It'd be somewhere approximately there. Okay, this would be the projection or the shadow of V on U. Okay, but if I find the projection of U onto V, oh, I'm gonna kinda of have to estimate where this is gonna go. I'm gonna just temporarily make this line so that it's perpendicular to the line that vector V lies on. And the projection of U onto V would be this vector right here. Okay, so it's the shadow that U casts on V. So we just want to be really clear about which one we're trying to find here. Um, so let's, let's see what, what it's asking for first. Okay, so it's, it's going to ask for both of them here. So this one, the first one is going to be U onto V, and the second one is going to be V onto U. Okay, we're projecting a V, like V is casting a shadow on U. Over here, U is casting a shadow on V. So let me go ahead and just kind of show you the difference. You can see them side by side here. Zoom out a little bit so you can actually see it. There we go. Um, so let me copy this diagram since we are using the same vectors for both of these. Okay, now we've got all this set up. The, when we're projecting U onto V, that's gonna be this vector right roughly about here. Okay, where this line right here makes a, uh, is perpendicular to that vector. And then um, when we're projecting V onto U, that's gonna be roughly this, this little guy right here. Okay, so hopefully that kind of illustrates the difference between these. So now we're gonna go through and actually calculate them. Okay, we're gonna use this formula. Okay, so this is gonna equal, just pull that up. Can we get, fit both of these on here, barely? Yeah, okay. So the projection of U onto V is going to be the dot product of U and V. So maybe to the side, since we're gonna to have to calculate this anyway, uh, I'm gonna do the dot product of U and V here. So U times V is gonna be seven times one. 
uh, plus one times two. So that would be seven uh, plus two, yeah? And so the dot product is gonna be nine. Now, multiplication is commutative, so the dot product of u and v is gonna be the same as if we were to multiply v times u. So this is gonna be the dot product. Um, we're also going to need to know the magnitudes of these vectors in order to use that formula. So let's find each of the magnitudes. The magnitude, uh, on, let me type it. Oh, I don't really like the uh, symbology there. I'll just draw them in. So the magnitude of u is going to be equal to the square root of 7 squared plus one squared. Let me throw in those little bars here. Oh, I don't know if I can fit all those in there. Um, you know what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to delete that and just type it in separate. It's probably a better way of doing it, but I'm not gonna waste my time trying to figure it out on the spot here. Okay, so there's the magnitude of u. So it'd be the square root of, let's see, 7 squared is 49, 1 squared is 1. So uh, 49 plus 1 would be the square root of 50. Okay, so that is the absolute value of u. Now the absolute value of v, I'm sorry, absolute value. I'm saying absolute value, but I mean uh, the magnitude. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the magnitude, rather, of vector v is the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. One squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So this will just be the square root of 5. OK. So the projection see if Cammy's going to let me write this, of u onto v. Is there going to be an option here? Uh, there we go. Yeah, I'll just have to go back and add in the little markers on there. But anyway, the projection of u onto v is going to equal uh, this formula right here. So the dot product divided by the magnitude of the one you're projecting on, in this case, v squared, okay, that will be uh, a scalar times the vector v itself, okay? Let me go in and throw in one extra set of bars here. There we go. All right. So we've already done the legwork here to calculate, you know, the dot product and these magnitudes. So at this point, we're just going to be plugging numbers in. Try to squeeze that in back in there. Come on. There we go. All right, that's close enough. Okay, so u dot v, we calculated, we said it was 9. Okay, so this is going to be 9 divided by the magnitude of vector v, which was root 5. And root 5 squared is going to be 5. So we get 9 fifths times the original vector v, which in our case, in this case, is 1 comma 2. And going back to the first day's lesson, when you're multiplying a scalar, by a vector, you will just distribute uh, both of these in there. And so you get 9 fifths times 1, which is just 9 fifths, uh, which would be like 1 point, 1 point uh, 8, or I'll just leave it as 9 fifths. But yeah, it'd be 1.8, a little bit more than 2, comma. Let's see, 2 times 9 is 18 fifths. So that would be roughly like 
Uh, what would that be? Uh, 18 fifths, so that's more than three, uh, like 3.6 or something like that. Now, this sketch down here is pretty rough, and it's not drawn to scale, but you can kind of see that this would be kind of close to that. All right, so that's the projection of u onto v. Now let's try to find the projection of v onto u. For, uh, for the projection of v onto u, um, we're gonna do basically the same thing, except we're gonna swap out the, uh, the u and v here. So uh, the dot product either way is gonna be the same, so you can kinda just leave that alone. But we wanna change these to u's. Okay, so the projection of V onto U, so the one that you're projecting onto is this is the one that's in the subscript, is going to be the dot product, which we already calculated. In fact, we already calculated all this. Um, let's go ahead and write it out. So u dot v is something we already calculated above. It's nine. And it would be the same if it was v dot u. You know, I don't want you to think that, oh, I'm just ignoring that. Maybe I should fix that here. Uh, but you will get the same value either way. u dot v is the same as v dot u. So you're gonna get nine. And then the magnitude of u, we said it was root 50, and root 50 squared is just gonna be that, 50. So we're gonna multiply 9 over 50 by vector u. We're basically going to be scaling this one down, which makes sense because the you can clearly see that the projection is going to be smaller. Um, so the fact that this number is less than 1 um, supports that. Vector u here is 7 comma 1. And so we're going to distribute this number to both components. And uh, this is going to be kind of a rough answer here. Rough is in like, not very nice here. Uh, nine times seven is 63, so 63 fiftieths. It's a little bit more than one, and you can see from my kind of really rough sketch here, okay, so it looks like the X component is a little bit more than one. I'm expecting the Y component to be less than one though. Um, you can see that this doesn't go quite up to a one. Uh, and the, the rough, the sketch is, is not very accurate anyway, I mean, in terms of, it's not just drawn to scale or anything, it's just, I'm just trying to give you an idea of where this vector is. Um, so anyway, the next one, okay, well, 9 50ths times 1 is just 9 50ths. So yeah, that's definitely going to be less than 1. It's less than a half, which would be 25 over 50. It looks like it's like maybe a quarter or so, or not, no, not even. Uh, a little bit less than a fifth. So, um, yeah, so like point one, eight, or something like that. I don't know, I'd have to double check the, the math there, but you could leave it as a fraction. And so that would be the vector that is indicated by that green directed line segment below. And this would be our answer, and this would be the answer for the first one. So that's how you're gonna calculate the projection. And like I was saying before, projections have a lot of applications in physics. For instance, they help us calculate work. Um, so here's just an, some information about how to calculate work, okay? The force applied at an angle has a limited influence in the required direction. The component of the projection vector gives you the exact applied force in the required direction. So um, the formula for calculating work is it's the it's force times distance, you know, how much force are you applying and how far are you moving? And both of these can be vectors, okay? So, uh, um, so let's go ahead and find these vectors. So in other words, um, the projection of F onto PQ, so F being the force, PQ being the distance, um, we're just gonna find the dot product of these, okay? And we can calculate the projection. Remember that from uh, you know, in our last lesson, we said the length of this vector is equal to, um, the cosine of this angle measure between the vectors 
times the magnitude of the first vector. So the, uh, that, the magnitude of the projection is, is that. Okay, it's the same thing that we were working with in the last lesson. So to break it down, the simplest way to put it is that we want to multiply the magnitudes of the force and uh, by the distance. So here's a, here's a specific example. Okay, it says, to close a sliding barn door, a person pulls on a rope with a constant force of 50 pounds. Okay, so the force of 50 pounds um, and at a constant angle of 60 degrees. Okay, that's this guy down here. He's trying to pull the door closed. Find the work done uh, in moving the barn door 12 feet to its closed position. So first, we are gonna find the distance vector. So this should be pretty obvious for most of these problems. Uh, it'll either be explicitly given or you can just kind of figure it out. In this case, you're moving it 12 feet um, and this diagram looks like you're moving it 12 feet to the right. So we're gonna write this vector as being, um, let's make this a little bigger here, as uh, 12 comma zero. Okay, so you're moving it 12 feet to the right and then zero units up or down. Now we'll find the force vector. Okay, so the force vector is this vector down here. Now it's not given explicitly, but it, they do give you the direction angle, or at least uh, uh, they're indicating what the direction angle is, and um, the magnitude. So this is the magnitude, this is the direction angle. So just a little reminder on how you find the components of the, uh, you know, given an angle and a, uh, um, and a magnitude. The x component will be equal to uh, the magnitude times, uh, nope, that's not the dot that I want. Let's see if I can pull this up. All right, yeah. So the magnitude times the cosine of the direction angle. which you, know, you might throw in 60, but notice that it's, it's going down here. So we'll, that this is like a reference angle. We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, the Y component, given a magnitude in the direction angle, um, is the magnitude times the sine of the direction angle. So to find F, um, first, we know what the magnitude is. It's 50. But what we don't know is immediately at least, we don't know the, um, uh, the direction angle. So looking at this diagram, you know, if this is 60, I'm gonna overlay, let's see what color will show up good here, maybe orange, green, green looks good. I'll make this real thick, okay? So let's say, you know, here's my X and Y axes here, okay? And I'll go back and erase this, but if this is 60 degrees, then this angle right here is going to be 360 minus 60, so that's going to be 300. All right. Oops, there we go. So uh, the vector of the force is going to be uh, the magnitude, which is 50, times the cosine of 300 degrees. And the Y component will be 50 times the sine of 300 degrees. So to find the projection, now this is gonna be pretty easy because our, um, okay, move this. Oh gosh, I guess that's got to be smaller. There we go. So the projection of F onto PQ, so that's this force onto, uh, I'm sorry, the force is down here. The projection of this onto this is going to uh, give you the amount of force given in the horizontal direction. Now, since our 
Y component or our vertical component on PQ is zero. This should work out pretty easily. Uh, we could actually probably get a better answer up here, uh, but I'm gonna just let that sit there. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate this out. Um, yeah, so let's, let's, let's simplify this a little bit. So 50 times the cosine of 300. Um, 300 is an angle measure that we can find on the unit circle. So we can actually calculate this a little bit more accurately. Gosh, I can't not get the font to match it. There we go. Um, so let's pull up that unit circle and look at 300 degrees. There we go. So at 300 degrees, our coordinate is 1 half root 3 over 2. So cosine of 300 degrees is going to be 1 half. And sine of 300 degrees is going to be the y coordinate at 300, and that's going to be negative root 3 over 2. All right, so 50 times a half is just going to be 25. Um, and over here, 50 divided by 2 is going to be 25, so we get negative. 25 times root 3. There we go. So this is going to be our force vector. So now we're going to find the projection of this vector onto this. Now just take a quick look here. Um, you know this, what we're going to find is this vector right here, that shadow vector. So it's going to be a little bit smaller. And then once we get that, we just multiply them together pretty easily. Uh, okay, so let's find the projection now. We're going to use this formula, so I'll just copy it from up here. So this formula, uh, as written, is the projection of u onto v. So I can get it to paste, which doesn't, because I didn't copy it correctly. Go. So yeah, this is u onto v. So if I want to actually go f onto pq, this would be, uh, so u in this case would be f and pq would be the v here. And uh, I kind of wish I had some, yeah, these, these bars are looking terrible. Is there a way for me to, no. I wonder if I can just do this. It'll let me put the bars like that. Okay, well, that'll work. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, so this projection, um, let's go ahead and start filling in everything we, we have here. So we need to find the dot product of F and PQ. So that would be 12 times 25 plus zero times negative 25 root three. Um, so yeah, let's calculate this. 12, 12 times 25 would be like 12 quarters. 12 times 25, pretty sure that's gonna be four, uh, 300. Let me double check that in the calculator. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, 12 times 25. There we go, 300. Okay, so yeah, and then zero times this is just gonna be zero. So this whole numerator is just gonna be 300. And the magnitude of PQ should be supremely obvious, right? If this is 12 comma zero, um, the square root of 12 squared plus zero squared is just the square root of tw 12 uh, squared, which is just 12. So the magnitude of PQ 
is going to be, let me just cut, write it out here so you can see how it's, you know, it's kind of funny actually. 12 squared plus zero squared, right? Zero squared is obviously zero. 12 squared is 144. And the, uh, the square root of 144 is 12, okay? 12 squared is 144, so we get that as like our, uh, our, our scalar multiplier. And then PQ, we already know what PQ is, it's 12 comma zero. And so basically what we will do is multiply this um, uh, by uh, both of these, okay? So the projection is gonna be 12 times, ugh, 300? Is that, maybe that reduces, let's see if that reduces. Hopefully it does. Well, where'd my calculator go? Come on, come back, come back. There we go. Okay, so we've got 300. I'm not even going to bother reducing it yet. I'll let the calculator do the reducing for me. Over 144 times 12 and it's 25. So the projection is 25, which honestly should have been obvious, be <laughs> well, obviously should have been obvious, because the x component of this force vector here, right, it was, we said it was 25 comma negative 25, three, so of course this should be 25 exactly. <laughs> it's kind of, so kind of funny thing. Um, so anyway, there's our projection vector. is gonna be 25 comma zero. All right, so the work done, let's go back up here, is calculated by multiplying the magnitude of the projection vector um, times the magnitude of the uh, direction uh, uh, vector. So the work, equals the, um, the projection vector, this one right here, or the magnitude of the projection vector. Let's go ahead and get the, oh, come on. It's gonna do that again, watch. Yep. There we go. Okay, times the uh, magnitude of the, uh, of the uh, direction vector. So in this case, the PQ. It keeps doing that, I don't know what, there we go. Okay, so these should be pretty obvious to find, okay, because one of these is zero. So the projection vector here was 25 comma zero and the magnitude of that is just gonna be 25 because there's just 25 going in that direction. So we get 25 times the magnitude of PQ, uh, which we already said was 12, right? So 25 times 12 is gonna be 300, right? Pretty sure. Oh wait, we already did that, yeah, it is 300. So in terms of units, it's kind of weird when you're talking about a, um, a, a work is you take the two units that you had before. So like in this case, we're talking about pulling a rope. The distance is measured in terms of feet and the weight or the force rather is measured in terms of pounds. And so we call them 300 foot pounds. I know it's kind of a weird name, but that's what it's called. That's the, that is the name of the unit for work. Now, I just want to throw one last thing out here before we finish off. Um, if, and I'll write this down in here, if the, um, if the force is measured in newtons and the Uh, distance is measured in meters, the work will be 
you know, a Newton meter. Or there's actually a name for a Newton meter. We call it a joule, something you may have uh, heard of in either like chemistry or uh, probably physics more likely. Um, okay, yeah, this is just a little side note. You know, when you're doing your homework, there's going to be, I think, one or two that are, that are in this form. Um, you know, th this seems kind of convoluted way to get work. Really, as long as you're multiplying the force times the distance, you're going to be good. Um, so as soon as you find the force here uh, of the projection, um, you know, 25 times 12, like these two numbers are the, the ones you're going to multiply together. So that's it for today. Um, uh, y'all have a great day, and I'll see y'all next time.